Hey everyone, it's Dave from Curtis Crafts, and today I remake the Cadillac that Doc used for his plan in Back to the Future. So most people might not immediately recognize this project, but this is the model that Doc used to explain to Marty how he'd return to 1985 in the first Back to the Future movie. The base of which is a 1970s Japanese friction toy that's a model of a Cadillac. They come in all sorts of colors, but the correct one is red with a white interior. These can be found on eBay at the time of making this video from about $30 to $60. This is a metal toy, so everything comes apart with a flathead screwdriver for the most part, except for a lot of the chrome trim, which you'll have to break the melted glue on the back in order to remove. On the trunk I drill two holes, one of which is for the wind-up key that you see Marty use initially to start the car, and the other is for the lightning rod that attaches to the back. Both of these I'm going to make by bending some brass rod. After I have the basic prep work done and I fix some scratches on the body, I sand it down and then I move on to priming and painting both the interior and the body. For the red, I'm using an Ace Hardware brand spray paint called Banner Red, and the interior I'm using a Rust-Oleum Gloss White. Both the colors take about three coats to get complete coverage, and then I wait a day for each to dry. Anytime paint's drying, you can pass the time by subscribing to this channel. After this, I move on to fitting everything back together. Along with the freshly painted interior, I also cut a 16th inch piece of styrene to fit across the back seat and cover it. Doing some research, I discovered that this was both used to hide some explosives and the fact that they converted the car to have an electric motor. And this will be trimmed off by the convertible top cover in the back. All of those effects help drive the mishap scene where the car hits the tower, gets struck by lightning, and then flies off the table in a giant fireball and lights the car cover on fire. Most of the parts and all of the chrome trim get reattached with some super glue, which holds on really well. And the tabs on the bottom of the windshield which get bent back in place hold most of the body and interior together. Once the top is reassembled, I get out my assortment of brass rod and tube in order to make the lightning rod for the back. This will also serve to make the wind-up key mentioned earlier. I install everything through a piece of cork that I found, and dress up to look like wood. I later find out that the real deal was made from a chunk of a pencil. And on the prop you can see the glue bleeding out from underneath the bottom of it, so I figured hot glue was a good way to assemble this, which I apply to both the top of the trunk and inside to hold everything still. While I have the hot glue gun out, I also go through the inside of the body and coat some of the interior to hold everything together to facilitate reassembling this later to the base. Once it's flipped back over, I put in a bent piece of brass rod that fits just right and makes up the lightning rod. And then I install a brass key that I bent up in much the same way except for no cork. I also bend a small piece of flat 3 8 inch brass in order to make the electrical contact which goes behind the bumper. I attach this by wedging it between the bumper and the body with a little bit of glue before I screw the bumper together. And then it's on to reassembling dozens of pieces of chrome at lightning speed. Once it's completely back together, I'll be moving on to the weathering process. Now all that's left to do is to grab some black oil-based paints and weather up the top of this to make it look burnt. Ooh, shiny. Dave never leaves me alone with his projects. I better do a good job of watching him. That seems normal. This is fine. Uh...
Maybe I should use my built-in extinguisher arm. Uh, that, 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 that's, that's fine. <laughs>